Hello weirdos, um, wow, what's going on? Now, I'm gonna try to be careful with how I talk about this because this, this is wild. And the reason I'm even making this video is because it's so strange. But Gypsy Rose Blanchard, who you might know from every single corner of the internet for the past like month, but she got out of prison after spending, I think eight years there. And for some reason has been going on like a, like a media tour. And I wanted to look at some of the stuff that's come out of it because it's a very like, it's a very odd thing to experience. If you don't know why she was in prison or like the lore behind her, I'm gonna give you like a quick run through, but this is by no means thorough. But basically she was raised by a mother who allegedly has Munchausen syndrome by proxy, which is a mental illness in a form of child abuse. The caretaker of a child, most often a mother, either makes up fake symptoms or causes real symptoms to make it look like the child is sick. Why would somebody do that? Uh, it is a mental illness in a form of child abuse. So that is why. It's not logical, but that is what uh, her mother allegedly has. The mother is no longer with us, which is why, God, Gypsy Rose was in prison for eight years. Basically, whatever you can imagine the worst case scenario of someone having Munchausen syndrome by proxy, whatever the worst case scenario of that is, that's what the mom had and what she was doing to Gypsy. Like making her go into a wheelchair, shaving her, like really just bad, 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 bad stuff. And she made her feel trapped and she made her feel like there was no way out and her life was basically, it was terrible and dark and the mother was a horrible, horrible villain. But basically Gypsy met this guy, Nicholas Gojon. He met Big Nick on a Christian dating site and they grew close together and like fell in love and because she was in such a terrible life situation because of her you know mother she convinced him and talked to him i don't want to say listen she didn't do it but she, but nick put a permanent end to her mother in order to help her escape the evil mother and then he's in prison forever and she was in prison for eight years so i say that to say it's a very dark story and not necessarily something that you would think would spawn a prolific influencer career, like being a social media star, but it looks like that's what's happened. And you know, to be completely fair to Gypsy, she has been fully like repentant. She, she has taken no, like she's not proud of what happened, but she was in a situation that it's like, you know, a lot of people saw what she wanted to happen to her mother as a form of self-defense for her, which is totally valid because she was getting, you know, it's a terrible situation. But I think it's a little bit weird how much people on social media are like, I don't know, Princess Diana-ing her a little bit. It's, it's cause it's such a, I don't know. I have a thing where I get a little bit uncomfortable with like, the entertainment value in true crime. Like you remember when there was that case a couple years ago about like there was the girl and her boyfriend on a road trip and there was like, you know, police like body cam footage of them and then she went missing. Like the way that so many people turn that into like, just, I don't know. I don't find it entertaining at all. I find it very tragic and very sad and I feel horrible for Gypsy. But then she gets out of prison and that's what this video is about. But in the lead up to Gypsy getting out of prison, there were so many posts about like, Gypsy Rose Blanchard's about to get out of prison. Uh, anybody else psyched for this? And the response to a lot of those posts of her, you know, being released from prison imminently, the response to those was kind of like, why are you treating this like a Marvel movie release? <laughs> like, why are you hyping it up? Like it's Spider-Man Beyond the Cross, the verse of spiders part two. And I was kind of on that side where I'm like, let's, you know, this should be a little bit more serious, handled a little bit more delicately. And then she got released from prison, immediately went and got her nails done and posted a TikTok, which is, to be fair, that's like legendary queen behavior. That truly is, like, look at this. Hey everyone, this is Gypsy. I'm finally free. Um, I just want to send a quick video to thank everyone for the massive amount of support. Like, that's really sweet. That's a very sweet message. Also, I love the fact that she keeps going like this with her nails to show us. Yeah, I got French tips. Yeah, yeah. I stepped out of the prison yard, went immediately to the salon, and got my ass manicured. That's kind of fire. And she should be allowed to do this. This video is not me saying she should not be doing this. But it has has led to some very, very interesting situations. Girl, the lashes are slaying. By the way, you know what, fine. If her lashes are slaying, they're slaying. There's, they're like, okay, what's wrong with that? Nothing. But like then when she went on Entertainment Tonight to give an interview, the interviewer had to ask the mandatory question that I guess you have to ask anybody who's in any situation ever about Taylor Swift. Who cares? Why are you asking Gypsy Rose this question? Ugh. But real quick, I gotta take a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, Scentbird. Scentbird lets you choose a new designer fragrance every single month, and it's for just $17. So every month you get to pick what you want, so there's never any surprises. And it's really high quality stuff, even though it's that affordable. And I've always been a big fan of the packaging. Like they always look really nice. And if you ever forget what the fragrance is inside one of these, you just magnetically pop it open. Like this one is 19 degree by Tumi. They also carry brands like Versace, Gucci, Prada, as well as some indie brands. So you can try out some things you might not have ever heard of before, like Skylar or Confessions of a Rebel. It's so fun and like, 
Yeah, truly, that smells really good. I actually really like that. I'm gonna wear this a lot. But they also mail you a little card that has some information about the fragrance on the back. It tells you what the ingredients are and what like the notes you should be smelling are. For instance, this one has bergamot, saffron, birch water, leather, and black musk. They also sent me red wine brown sugar by Boho Boco. That's really good. That's that's really good. That's like a really fancy, like nice bookstore. Like a library in a palace, yeah. And finally, they sent me Father Figure by Fleur. Let's see what a good Father Figure smells like. That smells exactly like my dad. No, but actually this one's really subtle and nice. It's like, it's like a cool, nice, like, like you'd wear it on the beach. Yeah, I could be around crustaceans wearing this, yeah. But I really do love Semper. They've got such high quality stuff. And you can use my code FCOOPER55 for 55% off at Semper. So it's just a little over $7 for your first month. That's a crazy good deal, by the way. And it is available in the USA and Canada. And thank you again to Semper for sponsoring this video. Now back to talking about the other stuff. I am loving her Midnight Sarah right okay. now. I'm loving it. Karma has been like my number one on my playlist. Hmm, shocking. <laughs> what an unhinged and absolutely crazy thing to say to some. This woman just got out of prison for what I guess you're treating as like a little joke where her entire life was under the thumb of this abusive mother who she then went to prison for because her mother and he's gone for life. And this is what we know about her. So she says that she's loving the Midnight's era and she likes the song Karma. By the way, why are you asking Gypsy Rose about Taylor Swift? This is like a serious such oh my god but then for her to say karma and then go hmm shocking as if it's like some joke because i get it like oh karma that's funny because gypsy rose blanchard you know it was karma against her mother to you know and remember at no point has gypsy ever been like yeah i'm so glad that my boyfriend did that like to her face to go hmm shocking yeah karma that's a little interesting because didn't you Okay, I can't say that, but like, do you know what I mean? Why, like, this is a real person, not content. But the people who are doing this are treating it like content. To her face though. Anyways, another thing that's been going on is a lot of people are talking about her husband. Not, by the way, the guy who did that to her mom. Married a man while in prison and they're still together. And he's also on social media where a lot of people are telling him that he looks like her Mother. A lot of people are saying that. That's kind of one of the jokes that people are commenting on his posts and her posts. As the comments are literally, huh, doesn't your husband look a little bit like the malignant tumor on your life of your mother? <laughs> you know, the biggest piece of trauma ever. Yeah, isn't that what your husband kind of looks like? Tormenting him so much to the point that she had to make a statement online, which led to the greatest Instagram comment I have ever seen in my entire life. This is genuinely nothing is better than this. I'm gonna read the whole thing. Ryan, don't listen to the haters. I love you and you love me. We do not owe anyone anything. Our family is who matters. If you get likes and good comments, great. If you get hate, then whatever, because they don't matter. I love you. Besides, they jealous because you are rocking my world every night, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I said it, the D is fire. Happy wife, happy life. Are you kidding me? Is that not the greatest thing ever? You're rocking my world every night, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I said it. The D is fire. Oh my God. And then him responding, by the way, profile picture with her because he's a loving husband. Who said I give a damn about what these jealous people say anyway? Ha <laughs> ha, dot, dot, dot. Now come get it, baby. Huh? And to be clear, like three days before this, all that anybody knew was the traumatic, dark, tragic, painful story of what happened in her life. To go from that to seeing so many people treated as entertainment online to the point that it's entertaining to call this victim's husband the spitting image of the victim's abusive mother? It's absurd. You know, that's what the internet is. The internet is a terrible, terrible place. And she herself has said that the reason that she's doing this is because like she can't really do anything else after this. Like her entire identity is about this. So what's she gonna like go to college and get like a regular job? No. So I understand why she's doing this, but it just leads to very, very weird, uncomfortable situations. Cause it's like, she's trying to be, you know, an influencer and stuff, which is, you know, it's odd, but it's totally fine. But then for people to be in the comments treating the stuff that she went through with the same level of care as like internet beef, like the way people interact with drama about like Trisha Paytas or Tana in the same way that they react to like Gypsy Rose and the stuff that she went through. It's so, ah, uh, like, look, somebody tweeted this. Somebody thought that it was okay to say this. Someone get hashtag Gypsy Rose, a stylist 
stylist and a content videographer. Her creepy husband mom sucks at producing her content. Are you kidding me? Do you have any self-respect at all? Her creepy husband mom sucks. What are you talking about? I need her to be getting better content. I need her to be getting better angles, better fashion. That's her husband. She's not making good enough TikToks for you, so you're gonna go equate her husband to her mom? Do you know the story? Clearly you do, so why the fuck are you saying that? And then stuff like this, like, listen, I get it's a joke. I get, you know, whatever, it's funny or whatever. Me accidentally commenting, slay mother on one of Gypsy Rose Blanchard's posts. Listen, I know it's funny, but like, it's true crime. But the people who are out here being like, the new people's princess, um, I'm sorry, is this Princess Diana? Listen, if you've been saying that, listen, I'm sorry, that probably felt insulting. The thing is, to her face, like, look at this guy. What? I know it's funny. Like, I know it's funny. I'm not, I'm not, in, I'm not, I'm, I know it's funny. To be rapping Nicki Minaj lyrics to Gypsy Rose, I understand why, like, I, I get it. It's funny. On the other hand, is it worth it to be doing that? Like, to her, what? I mean, I don't think people should, like, walk on eggshells around her for the rest of it. Like, I, yeah. But it just feels like, hey, have a little bit more respect of her. What do you think? Like, stuff like this to her face, like, in front of her. I, I don't know. It's, but whatever. What, you can't rap Nicki Minaj to somebody now? Like, I guess you can. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Given the context of everything and just, like, it feels like just treating her like this internet meme. I don't know. She's not an internet meme. Okay, here's a tweet. Gypsy Rose's life is crazy. Imagine being a victim of abuse all your life and when you get out of jail, suddenly gay people and weird girls are obsessed with you. Yeah, I mean, on the one hand, <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a way to put it. I, uh, yeah, I think that's what it is. The obsession is a little bit weird where it's like standing her and it's like, slay queen. Oh, not slay mother though. It's like a little bit weird. I think that's what it is. There's a difference between being supportive of somebody and happy to see somebody thriving. Somebody who's gone through like the worst and to see them coming out and, you know, doing better. Like that is a really good feeling and you would want to feel happy for that person. But I think that some people do not understand how to behave. I think that a lot of people just don't understand how to like be a human being because I am so happy for her to be out of that situation and to have clearly grown so much and spent so much time in therapy and growing and becoming better and like well-rounded and having a good support system around her. That makes me very happy. And I'm so glad to see her growing and, you know, succeeding and thriving in life. That makes me very happy. Seeing her out of prison with her nails freshly did. That's really nice. But to be an interviewer going, have you been listening to Taylor Swift recently? I don't know if you know this, but she's been dating Travis Kelsey and she has the heiress too. What's your favorite Taylor Swift album? You know, I've really been liking Midnight's uh, Karma. That's been my go-to song. Mm, karma. Mm. Interesting. I know I'm being really annoying and really over exaggerating and extreme, but that's how I feel when I see people like that. Get a grip. Get a grip. Uh, Emma Stone, I know you just won a Golden Globe, but what do you have to say about Taylor Swift being in the eye? Shut up. Maybe talk about poor things. By the way, I know everybody loves poor things. It was technically amazing. Like everything about it's great, except the entire story and what the movie is. Bro, bro, you cannot tell me that this girl is like mentally a little child and then have her graphically with Mark Ruffalo and expect me to be like, oh, she's experiencing womanhood. I am seeing a little girl. Like I'm not seeing Emma Stone, the full girl. I'm seeing a child and Mark Ruffalo in that way, that was the, one of the most disturbing and like, oh, it's supposed to be disturbing. No, I, I do no. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. That made movie made me so like, I wish I had not like, oh, uh. but I mean, other than that, it was a really technically perfect movie except for what the story was. Anyways, what am I saying? Leave her alone. Talking about Gypsy Rose and Bella from Poor things. Leave her alone! This is another kind of wild moment from the Gypsy Rose press circuit tour, press media conference tour. She's playing the newlywed game with her husband, Ryan, who's D, allegedly, is fire. And look at this part right here. <laughs> Did we get it right? Yeah, the question, what Disney princess would she be? And her husband answers, Rapunzel from Tangled. You know, the little girl that was abused by her mother and locked away in a tower? That's who she'd be. Which, to be fair, I mean, he was wanting to win. He was trying to pick the best answer. He was really trying to win. It's wild though, because that went crazy viral. It's so weird to see people like memeing this and like, and they're, but they're doing the newlyweds game. And her saying Anna from Frozen, which is like, by the way, you might be thinking, well, that's kind of, no, that's Elsa. Elsa was the one who was isolated and alone. Get your facts straight. Anna was the one who wanted to go out and play. Elsa didn't want to go play. Uh, but no, her husband, Ryan, was going for the win. He was really trying to win by by picking Rapunzel. It's just strange when you think about the context of it though, you know what I mean? It's, it's, it, you know? But hey, shout out Rapunzel, shout out pansexuals who have 
some sort of relative in the Marines. Hoorah! <laughs> what the fuck? I don't know what that was. And sexuals with a relative in the Marines. Hoorah! <laughs> I don't know where this is coming from. That, oh man, that made me uh, that made me giggle. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you, <laughs> sorry, I got the giggles. This is not funny. This is not funny. It's about time to be funny talking about funny. And like, look at this part right here. This is an interview with Access Hollywood. It's just a weird publication. Like, you would think that an interview would be like with 60 Minutes or CNN, not Access Hollywood. But this is a part where the interviewer asks a question about her saying, the D is fire. And just look at this moment. Your response to everybody else's response to that response well, is. number one, I never asked her to do that. The no, response is, no, no, don't no, bother no, me. No, no. Throw that hate, guys. I don't care. It doesn't <laughs> bother me. I got this to go home to. So that's a really sweet moment, and he seems like a really kind guy and I love his like the way he talks he reminds me of some of my family members in Arkansas you know you can do whatever you want man but you know by the end of the day I got my I got my sweet wife that I'm going home to so you just keep on you know keep on keeping on he's got just like a very kind nice attitude and vibe but what happens right after this what happens right next nobody's talking about this because it's such a small moment but it's something that really stood out to me as like an indicator of why some of this stuff feels weird to me because she's doing nothing wrong here she's just talking there with her husband Ryan but look at the way the producers at Access Hollywood are treating this moment. Watch what happened. It upset me. I'm, of course, like, I love him and his feelings are important to me. So watching those comments, I just wanted to basically say, hey, don't listen to the haters. The way that it zooms in on her while she's talking about her relationship with him, she's specifically talking about their connection as a producer in any other situation, you would think that, okay, well, let's keep this as a shot of the two of them. There's, she's talking about their relationship, it, but it's just this manufactured fucking overproduced thing where they're like, let's zoom in real tight on her. Let's cut him out and zoom in really tight on her. Yeah, she's given us a really nice moment. Let's, let's, get, a, let's get a clip out of this. Like that's so produced and so like using her for or like, do you know what I mean? Just the attitude of the like the producers behind this segment. It is very clear in that decision to just go zooming in on her. Because by the way, I went to school like for like film production and stuff. So I've shot live segments. I've shot sh like stuff like this. And you always have like a headset on and like the, as a cameraman, you're hearing like the director, producer like of this segment. Go camera two, camera two, push in, push in. Like you're hearing those orders and that's very clearly what's happening right here. And it's like not her fault. Like I think that some people would see this and be like, oh, she's just trying to like, oversaturate. Oh, she's just doing too much. Now we're annoyed by Gypsy Rose. No, it's the way that publications try to capitalize and monetize off of her because she's having this big moment where everybody cares about her. But it's like they care about her because of this insanely horrible, tragic, traumatic thing. And it's like these publications lose sight of that and then just treat it like entertainment. Like this is something you get in the press junket for Oppenheimer when you've got Killian Murphy and Robert Downey Jr. sitting next to each other and Robert Downey Jr. talking about how generational of a performance and of a film Oppenheimer and Killian as Oppenheimer was. Like it would zoom in on Robert Downey Jr. as he's saying all this stuff. Not Gypsy Rose who went through that. Like, do you understand context producers? No, you care about money and that's it. It's so frustrating to watch. And like, look at this moment. This is such a gaffe, which is shocking for the view. Nothing crazy has ever happened on the view. If you kick every Latino out of this country, then who is going to be cleaning your toilets, Donald Trump? Oh. Yeah, do you remember that? If you kick every Latino out of the country, who will be cleaning your toilets then, Mr. Trump? <laughs> Got ya. Oh wait, that was incredibly racist? Guys, no, I meant in the sense that Latinos clean toilets, like, that's not racist. And that platform was where Gypsy Rose was interviewed and had this moment. I did it the wrong way, um, no, so, no, no, no. you know. Don't say that. I, but I did, no I, choice, I did really. something wrong, and I, I paid my dues for it. Oh, you it. mean that part? Yes, the part of it, oh, yeah. you know, that part of it. <laughs> yeah. Where are you Never going with this, yeah, yeah, No, 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 no. You know, so I did murder something. Murder is wrong, Yes, yeah, murder is wrong. That's what happens when you're just using this for content, and you're just using it for, like, let's invite the viral girl on. Oh, come on, sweetie, you didn't do anything wrong. We stand you. While she's like, oh, no, 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 the thing that you're talking about is very like, I should have done something different. And you can see her herself is like, the fact that she has to go, murder is wrong. Like, really? Because of how stupid you are with how you like are treating her? Like, oh my God, how stupid do you have to be? Did you even look at the case? What did you think that she was here for? She's saying, I did it the wrong way. And by the way, some people are like, she didn't do anything wrong. She did what she thought that she had to do, but she has at no point been like, I'm glad I did that instead of something else. She just didn't know that she had other options. It's a whole convoluted, very dark story. And we should feel a lot of, you know, empathy for her, in my opinion. And I think that most people do, but to just be like, oh girl, you didn't do anything wrong. When 
what she went to prison for was it's just kind of like unbelievable that you can have her on your show and say something like that it's absurd there's this other clip that i saw on twitter when i was doing research for this video and it's not something that a lot of people are talking about this is just something that i guess a gypsy rose fan account made weird concept to have a fan account you know when what she went through was as dark and like but anyways i saw this clip and i just think it goes to kind of paint a full picture of like the brain rotted view of this entire situation so just watch what gypsy rose is saying and then watch like the end of this video because it's very bizarre i have to remind people every single time that i'm not the one that committed the act of the kill so you know i'm a part of it but in the state of missouri they, there's no such thing as accessory to murder so technically they couldn't charge you they couldn't charge me with accessory because that that charge doesn't exist i mean had I been in another state, I would have been charged with accessory to commit murder. Accessory to she wasn't an accessory to murder because they didn't have that law. If they did, she would be, but they didn't, so she wasn't. Got it, dumbass? Are you getting it? I don't think you're getting it. She's saying right there that people are attacking her, calling her a murderer when she didn't actually commit the act. But if she had done what she did in a different state, she would have been charged for accessory to murder. But because it wasn't in her state, she couldn't be charged with that. And you're going, got it, people? And then following it up with, by the way, a Napoleon and dynamite clip look at this gosh why can nobody take this seriously now i'm assuming that this is some 10 year old like it has you have to be 10 years old to post that oh no it's a pop brains pop account for pop hip-hop soul alternative news music and opinions okay it's just a small twitter account that wants to be like i don't know freaking pop base or like culture crave that's like ariana grande glamorizes in new photo dua lipa kicks our throats in and slaughters us in newly shared instagram story that's what they're trying to be so they're sharing gypsy rose stan content uh yeah this is a problem everybody has become the producer in that access hollywood thing that directed them to zoom in on her to get like a clip like everybody is that it's not just the mainstream media who's doing that every single person is doing that because they think that they can become an influencer influencer by doing this. And that's why I'm talking about this because we have to be able to talk about things when they are very weird and uncomfortable and unsettling. But I'm trying to say it in a way where it's like, this situation makes me feel very weird because of all of these different reasons. That does not make Gypsy Rose somebody that I am upset with or mad at or like, a little bit too much Gypsy Rose. Anybody else kind of hate her now? Like, that's not what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that the publications who are talking about her are doing it in such a disrespectful way that is treating it like entertainment and like content and not treating it like, I'm a fucking YouTube channel who's made videos about the button. Why am I taking it more seriously than the fucking news? Is that not weird? You know what I mean? Like I am a commentary YouTuber. These people are entertainment corporations with like fucking thousands of employees and they're just treating it like, oh, let's get a quick clip for TikTok. Out of your mind? Yes, you are. Just get a grip. Just for once. Just get a grip. I thought you might want to see something nice so you can feel better. So this is Gus's pause while he's sleeping. Sometimes he, when he dreams, he like, he runs his little pause around. So, so that's what that is. So, and again, I've got to say thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Again, use my coupon code FCOOPER55 for 55% off your first month at Scentbird. God, that's what I wanted to talk about today though. So I don't know. I love you guys very much. Please subscribe. I really appreciate it. By the way, I just saw that I've hit 900,000 subscribers like this year. That's absurd. Like in 2023, I went from nothing to having 900,000 subscribers, which is so exciting to me. And I, it makes me, it makes me feel very grateful. And Matt Pat left, so I'm gonna start making 100 game three videos because I guess uh, that's just, uh, I guess uh, that's just, uh, I guess I, uh, yeah, I guess. Uh